gentleman over there with the face mask is Arnaud Legrand. And you might know Arnaud Legrand from Christian Communications World Mina, where we had an interview about the Nokia backpack. Well, since then, much has changed within the company. The company has exhibited uh, several exhibitions since then. Uh, they had a small booth, they had a larger booth, they had an even larger booth, and now they're having a big booth. And they're also represented at Critical Communications Finland, which is just around there. So, as I said, much has happened for the company. With the change of narrowband to broadband, you know, Nokia's proposition has become even more important for many governments around the world. To understand exactly what this is all about, I'm having an interview planned with Arnaud Legrand. But he is extremely busy. It's 12 o'clock, it's noon. Um, that's where we had this interview slot. But you know, you know, you will know how that works during exhibitions like this. There's no time, but there's there must be time somewhere. And when we're talking about Nokia, we talk mainly about private LTE, that, because that's where the company is actually very good at. Um, so let me sit down, relax, wait until Arnaud is ready, and uh, let's see how it goes. Yes, I got. Oh, okay. Like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, okay. Without touching. Yeah, without the... touching the table. It would be tough, huh? Arnold <laughs> Lecon. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much for having me at the Nokia booth. I am really excited in what you guys are showcasing because I just said that you were exhibiting at several exhibitions of Critical Communications World, starting with a tiny booth. Now you have a bigger booth. It's growing, your application portfolio is growing, your solutions are growing. So what are we going to show? So what are we going to see here today? So yeah, so the key here is really about mobile broadband uh, transformation of public safety network. It's still the main theme, the main uh, theme for this show. And that's the main uh, theme for our booth today, okay? But um, I think what we are showing, because it's not new and uh, what makes our offer probably unique is the fact that we have lots of experience first in mission critical networks because we are serving more than 190 customers across the world today for public safety customers. We have lots of experience in this mobile broadband technology because we are one of the market leaders overall if you consider all communication markets. And that's what we bring, this technology capability that we bring to the table to our public safety customers, both in 4G and 5G, obviously. And the last thing is the fact that we are able to provide end-to-end -end network, and we are pretty much unique in these capabilities. And I, we're going to show you on the booth what do we mean exactly by this end-to-end -end and how we can leverage these end-to-end -end capabilities to bring kind of solution turnkey to our customers, to our public safety customers in the market. I'm really excited to see what you guys have there. I already saw something about spying. I saw something about interrupting a network. I saw some goggles. I'm really curious, so let's go outside, okay? Okay, good. Okay. Because this is inside. This is your little booth over here for discussions with your customers, right? So yes. Okay, so where do we go? Oh, no. Let's start with the, uh, the right. VR goggles. Okay, all right. Well, I can identify this as virtual reality, right? It, it is, and actually we use virtual reality to educate the customers on what are the benefits of mobile broadband for first responders, okay? Okay, so what exactly happens here? Because how am I connected to who and how? Well, it's pretty simple. There is a fire, and the fire chief is alerted, and if you experience it, you will see how we use modern tools to plan the mission, know what's going on, and be much more efficient at the day. At the end of the day, to uh, to to be much more quick, to be quicker to the scene, quicker to uh, to plan the plan of, of, of the of the mission. Yes, and uh, and and solve the problem basically, or, or solve the fire uh, much quicker. So okay. I can be the fire chief, right? Okay. Right now I can see some some rescue helicopters over there. Drones. I can see drones. There. No, no, just bring it there. Like that. And yeah. Just. 
Put it there. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. it. All right, that's easy. So this is the stuff you want to bring in for the mission. Okay, I'm, you... I'm requesting drones. Now you see all the vehicles which are available at the fire station. Oh, wait a minute. I... Hey, where are you? I'm on the road. <laughs> I'm on the road to the fire incident. Hey, exactly. <laughs> now you can plan the map. So you have the map. You have the different vehicles. You can put them. We say, okay, you will say this one is going there. This one is there. Okay. And you take click on share and it will be dispatched to the other vehicle so now they all know what to do and now you are there oh there's a fire there's a serious fire it looks like i'm in vienna at the and moment. look you can see your team you are you can see your vehicle you can see your team and you are done and you close the you you did a great job huh? wait a minute this is okay all right so so <laughs> So can you imagine that when you're a fire chief, wherever I am with my tablet, I can control everybody everywhere to any mission. And I think that's what it's all about. Uh, that's kind of interesting. This was a fire situation, but it can be a policing situation. It can be anything, right? I don't know. Absolutely, absolutely. We took an example with fire, but yes. yeah, it can be anything. It can be anything. And the goal is really to simulate, and it's real. We've been building the scenario with real firefighters because that's what they want to have. What's next? Well, next one, let me show you because you know, public safety teams have to operate anywhere. Yes. And, and a great uh, tool to do that is to use deployable system. If you have big disasters, if, uh, and the network is down, if you are going in very remote areas, there is no network coverage, you want to bring your coverage. So we are showing here, we have a collaboration. All right. uh, yes. with a company called SAB that probably you know well. Yes. And they are very specialized in military gears, but they are, we are working with them in order to provide this kind of systems to public safety and military officers and military. It's uh, an ad hoc uh, network. It is ad hoc network. It's a deployable, it's a tactical LTE network that you can bring with you. How fast can you set this up? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. And, you have, and they have been working on an interface. You see the laptops, it's to uh, set up the stuff. It's because it is to be used by non-professional uh, communication guys, it's very simple to set oh. up. Okay. All right, so and there was something else, something about fiber optics. And because this... This, uh, this is interesting. This is these broadband networks, this is a radio, but, you know, as you go to broadband, you need high throughputs, so you need fiber to back all, all this traffic back to the common and control. And let me show you a very nice application, which is... Because everybody thinks that uh, when you have fiber, it's light, so you can spy the traffic. But actually, it's not true. Uh, with a device that costs approximately 20 euros, you can absolutely spy the traffic which is going That's on the this fiber. little device, right? Yes, this little device. For 20 euros, you can buy a device, you can spy the fiber. So, in other words, you can spy on what's communicated through the fiber. So the weakest link could be the fiber. Could be. Could be yeah, Fortunately, could be. we have a solution. This is a little device that will curve the fiber. Yes. Okay. And by curving the fiber, you get access to, what, uh, to the traffic and, and the line. Okay. So we have a tool uh, which is able to detect that there is an anomaly uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the traffic. And, and which is able to detect where is this anomaly. So where, what is the position where the spying is happening? Right. The location where the spying is happening, okay? First tool. Second thing, which I think is very interesting, obviously, to counter that, what we are also showing here is an encryption. So we are able to encrypt the fiber optic traffic without at all degrading the performance of the network, of the optical network. I mean in terms of throughput, in terms of latency, no degradation at all. And this is extremely robust encryption, which has been approved by the French cybersecurity yeah, uh, I can entity. See that that's this signage over here. Exactly, exactly. Okay. okay? And it's and, and we, we say it's quantum safe. Even quantum computing okay. is not able to yeah. decipher the stuff.
so um, you guys have been doing a lot of stuff about private wireless, right? I see a lot of press releases coming out, but, but there is more, right? That there is... Yeah, so that's, no, that's correct, yeah. And in fact, what you see here is primarily public safety because lots of the audience is about public safety. But these, private, these broadband technologies that we are showcasing there are also very much used in private, in many other industrial segments. And it's the same technology. And in many cases, lots uh, the same applications that are used by all these segments. So I think it's a strange from Nokia because we are very strong also in those other market segments in private wireless. We have more than 450 private wireless customers as we speak. And that's something that can really benefit basically the whole mission critical market, not just the public safety one. And I think it's an important message we want to pass to the, to the, to the market. 450 private wireless Customer, I mean, it's it looks like the 450 megahertz for uh, Alliance, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. That's a that's a nice match, actually. <laughs> is that a coincidence or not? Certainly. <laughs> Certainly. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Yeah, you're welcome. Right. Thanks, Gert. This event is about technology. This event is about all kinds of different technologies. But sometimes we tend to forget the human factor in this whole uh, technology playing field. Now, Thomas Rayberg is able to talk to me a little bit about the, the human factor that we sometimes tend to forget. I spoke about this yesterday, actually, at the, um, uh, the Finnish embassy, and that's why we're here right now. We spoke to each other yesterday, yeah. and that was a kind of very nice uh, discussion that we had, and you opened my eyes about that, because we tend to forget the human factor, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's a bit uh, also a, not a concern, but I think that I, I, I believe it should deserve uh, at least a couple of minutes in the thinking. It's mm -hmm. not enough just to provide a new technology to these public safety communities. Uh, we also need to be aware that um, behind all this, there are human beings and there are processes. And the processes as we can see them today, they I think are just simply a consequence on uh, also the capabilities of the tools they are using today. Now, we have two things. We have now a huge leapfrog in technology between narrowband and broadband. Obviously, first of all, uh, these communities, these users will try to find back their functionalities from how does it was in, uh, in narrowband, now where do I find my push button back on the broadband. But if we would leave it like this, this would be a big fail. Because what we also do by this, we are offering uh, a tool to these uh, user groups uh, for to also do much more than they ever did before. And not to forget, there is a new generation upcoming of people that have been growing up with the broadband technology. They look at into a smartphone yes. completely different as yes. you and I would do, right? Yeah. And just also, if you just uh, look to yourself, um, what is the amount of voice calls you are still doing with a smartphone? It's Relate going down to, and down to, and down. To data, yeah. Yeah, today in, in the narrowband world, obviously all is done on voice because there is simply not a reasonable alternative to this. But uh, once we are arriving in the broadband world, first of all, okay, it will be a copy of what they do today, but then it has to start. And let's bet on the creativity of this user group also. They will bring their own ideas. We offer the tools. We will listen to them carefully. What is really their concern and where it is going to? Maybe they will develop themselves and the processes into directions we haven't even considered beforehand. Uh, but this will need time. We see this also in other industries. It's not only about introducing a new technology and then how all kinds of thinking, how will it work, how will it also interwork between narrowband and broadband. I heard even customers saying, I don't even want the interworking because this will, it will even hamper my trans, uh, transformation. If it is too easy to let both of the, both of the, the worlds alive, it may also has his consequences and the time it will need. So I want to go rapid. Others would say, no, no, no. This need to exist in parallel, these two worlds for another decade, also fine. You see, we need to adapt to the user groups, but we should also be ready for surprises yeah, when this is uh, available for the public safety community. <laughs>